Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Uh, Pastor, how do I, how do I cast my cares on the Lord? How, how do I quit worrying about things? How do I stop fretting and being anxious uh, about situations and circumstances and the issues of life? And, and how do I know when I've done that? How do I know when I've cast all my care upon him? How, do, how, how, how can I measure that? Uh, and, uh, and can you share with me some, some, some helpful uh, Bible verses? Uh, and, and I can do that. Now, everything in the Bible is not universal to everyone. Everyone in the Bible, everything in the Bible is, is, just, not, is just not universal because everyone in the Bible is not a parent. Now, the principle of obedience is universally applicable. Everybody's called to obey the Lord in everything that he's instructed us in. And our Bible says, obey, children, obey your parents in the Lord when they are right. I don't know what's the matter with you all. They were revolting over here when I said that. All right? Ephesians 6.1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. We're not, we're, not, we're not called to be circumstantially obedient to the Lord. Neither, if we're children, are we called to be circumstantially obedient to our parents and sit back then in judgment of them and determine and decide when we will or won't be. Not as children. And we are all children of Jehovah. Amen. I've got a little more to say about it. As a matter of fact, I've got a lot more to say about it. But one of the most disgusting things that I've ever heard as a believer, as a Christian, let alone as a leader of God's people, was an individual leading a bunch of high school students <clears throat> in a private Christian school Bible study and teaching them how to, in the midst of a series on forgiveness, how to forgive God. Oh no, I'm not kidding, and I'm not making it up. And, and I was as appalled as you just were when I first heard it. And teach a bunch of formable young people, young ladies and young men, that sometimes God does things that in our situation aren't right and we just need to forgive him. Now, I know there are some other examples in my Bible of the height of arrogance. Yeah. <laughs> I may not understand everything about the eternal, everlasting, the almighty, the most high, the essence known as God. But for me to think, even in my remotest nightmares that I could stand up and pass judgment and say, in this case, I'm sorry to have to inform you, but you did wrong. You organized this wrong. You established this wrong. You, you set this up wrong. And it would have been better if you'd have done it like this, but I forgive you. And this is in a Christian setting, presented to Christian young people. I just go from this very simple premise. I know nothing. 
And God somehow in his goodness throughout life continues to pour in knowledge and revelation and understanding and illumination and even tells me right here in his word that I'll never comprehend him. And just because something doesn't make sense to me and I don't think it fits my situation and, and doesn't benefit me as well as I think it could. I have yet to see any person yet in, in my humble, now I'm in my seventh decade, doesn't that sound impressive? <laughs> of life. Huh? I have yet to see anybody left yet that's lived a perfect life, has a perfect marriage, has raised a perfect family, runs a perfect home, has a perfect business, or, or leads a perfect church. And if you can't get those little bitty, tiny, insignificant establishments perfect, you think you know more than him and could run the whole universe and the whole human race and make better decisions than him. Say, Pastor, why are you so wound about that? It wasn't us. You are thankful. <clears throat> but you see, everything, everything is not universal to everyone. But the principle in that verse is universal to everyone. You don't obey God when you think he's right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You obey God because it's right, not because you understand it, not because you comprehend it, not because you think it benefits you, not because you don't think you have a better way. You obey God because that's right. And you better just, you better just lean back and embrace the fact that he knows more than you. His principles are everlasting and eternal. And if he said it, he didn't make even one mistake. Our God is perfect, and his ways are perfect. And always will be. Yeah, amen. All right, the next verse says, Honor your father and mother. Honor is an eternal principle. If you don't understand it, if you don't grasp it, if you don't get it, keep your big mouth shut. Leave it on the back burner until you learn some more about it. Amen. Say that again. Amen. Get over here where I've got friends. <laughs> honor your father and mother. You're supposed to learn that at home. Yes. But if your parents have no honor, you probably didn't learn it. To a great degree, we live in a dishonorable, not even the absence of honor, dishonorable society. Dishonorable. And then, in his benevolent mercy, our God gave us a Bible and a Holy Spirit to help us not repeat the eternally destructive decisions of the last race of beings that God created. A third of which dishonored our God, refused to honor our God, disobeyed our God, refused to obey our God, and will plunge into the depths of everlasting banishment from His presence and punishment for their actions for all of eternity. Not us. That was an outstanding opportunity for you to say, Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your mercy, Jesus. For saving a wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now to a small degree I see. Praise God. Amen. Amazing grace. How Sweet the sound. Glory to God. Yeah, but, but, but uh, to a great degree, money is a principle that is impactful to everyone. It is, is relative to everyone. Well, you know, maybe not if you're four. 
but at, at, at some point in life, money is going to be an issue with you. That's why there's more verses about it in your Bible than any other single subject. Forgiveness. I mean, unless you live in a vacuum somewhere, <laughs> never, ever, ever have contact with another human being, like, like cast away, you know, deserted on an island. And then you just have to deal with yourself. And then you probably go stark, rave, crazy nuts and, and think you have to forgive God or something. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody deals with pride. Dr. Hicks taught us right here in this church two things that every human being in all of the universe, every human on the planet, every human being deals with two things, pride and insecurity. Now, many times they go together. Every human deals with pride. Every human deals with insecurity to some degree. Every human is going to have to learn to deal with money. And, and, and every human at, at, at some point has some experience dealing with worry. Cares. Anxiety. And whether we like it or not, as a Christian, now, not as a non-Christian, uh, I hope I'm talking to believers tonight. Hope you're not ashamed of it. Hope you never will be. As a Christian, not as a non-Christian, because they're lost, undone, without God, and without hope in this world. But as a Christian, when I fall prey to worry, in most cases fear, undue care and concern and anxiety about things, it is a result of The circumstance. No, it can't be the circumstance because that'll cause one person to be anxious and fret and wring their hands and miss their meals and be afraid and, 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 and pace the floor and, and, and just constantly see it in their mind and, and, and another person not be troubled by it at all. Same circumstance. Might be two people in the same house. Paul, I remember Brother Hagin's story about his wife getting so mad at him. I don't think she came stomping out. She had both kids in her arms, son and a daughter. And she came stomping out on the front porch, and she said, Kenneth E. Hagin, I don't think that you'd worry if both me and both these kids fell dead and this house burned down with us in it. I don't think you'd worry about it. And he said, huh, wouldn't I be a fool to do it then? Faith knows no worry. I can't do anxiety and believe in God. I can't do that at the same time. Can't do that at the same time. This is not an evidence of the bigness of the diagnosis. This, this isn't uh, uh, as a result of the, the ferociousness of the storm. 
this isn't result is is not a result uh, of the extent of the catastrophe or the potential of my devastation. This is a result of this being way too small. Let's look at let's look at some Bible verses. Let's help us. Help us tonight, Lord. Help us tonight, Lord. Help us tonight, Lord. I want to help you tonight. So the first verse we'll look at uh, is Hebrews 11, verse 6. Amen. I love the word. Love the word. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please my God. Without faith. See, faith, faith just trusts God. Faith takes God at his word. Faith believes what God says. And there's just something about this God whom we love and who saved us and who called us and who found us, who created us. There's something about this God that loves to be trusted. Just loves to be trusted. Just loves it. You ever see a parent set that little, that little tyke just starting to walk, set him right up on a high stool or a chair and say, come to daddy. Get that big grin on his face. And if that baby goes, ah! it's like, Oh, oh, they don't trust me. They can't want to drop them. They grow to trust you, don't they? Huh? I said, they grow to trust you. Yeah? Fall into my arms. Come on down out of that tree. <laughs> yeah, you grow to trust God. You grow to trust God. Faith is a fruit. Don't feel bad. Don't get under condemnation. Don't examine yourself and say, oh, I'm anxious about, about money and about, about the future and about the coronavirus. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I don't know what the stock market's going to do. It's lost 2,100 points in the last three days, Pastor. Did you not know that? Oh, thank you for telling me. My God shall supply unless the Dow Jones Industrial. <laughs> Something about our God loves to be trusted, loves to be depended on, loves to be just taken at his word, loves it when people walk out on the battlefield and everybody else is all in fear and anxious and stuff and says, Hey, God, God's for us. Who can be against us? Amen. And just, just, just take him at his word. No big fanfare about it. Don't write a book. Don't, don't get, a, get a website all started. You know, the, the sling-whipping, rock-throwing young kid who kills giants, www, you know. And, and, you know, he just goes out and does it. Just trust God. Just said, uh, I'm just going to take God at his word. And if it doesn't work, it meant he failed. And, and he must not have been big enough to keep it because I'm just going to take him at his word. And believe you me, he is big enough to keep his word. And when he sees someone and just raw F-A-I-T-H take him at his word, they'll walk on water. They'll, they'll walk on water. Man, the prison doors will fly open and, 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 and they'll just walk out. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll sit all night through the, through the lion's den and, and not even, they won't even have have the condensation of breath on them. And the next people they throw in, they're, they're, they're chomped up. People that just absolutely boldly and fearlessly take God at his word and say, do what you want, we don't care. Yep. Go ahead, do what you want. He'll walk right through the fire with them. Not, not, just, not just make it so that they aren't burned. He'll walk through it with them. He did it already. Yeah, absolutely did it already. Amen. And, and he hasn't changed. Don't tell me the day has changed and that, well, God wouldn't do that in our day. What? No? No? Who, who, who wrote that? Huh? Because Jehovah wrote that he's the same yesterday and today and forever. Jehovah wrote that he'll never change, that he never changes. Never. The only variable left is me. Because he doesn't change and his word doesn't change. Uh, and, and so that just leaves me. And if I'll take him at his word, and if, and if I'll believe him, and if I'll trust him, then that pleases him. Without faith, it's impossible to believe God, to, to please God. For whosoever cometh to God must believe 
that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That diligently seek him. So let's talk about praising, praising the Lord and bringing him pleasure and pleasing the Lord and, and in doing things his way. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. We're going to have to go real quickly you know, through our scriptures because the preacher wrote down a whole bunch. All right, I'm not going to read them all. I'm, I'm going to give you some homework assignments. 25 through 34. 25 through 34. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. That does not mean don't mean make plans, don't establish a budget, don't make a grocery list, don't, don't watch the gas gauge on your lawnmower, don't even think about life. It's what the Bible says. No, I need somebody that can read. Run quick. It says, take no thought. See the little T? Yes. What does it mean? Be not anxious. Be not anxious. What verse does it say to go look at? Philippians 4, verse 6. Okay, we'll do that next. We'll do that next, but not right now. Just stay here for a moment. So it says, do not be anxious. Okay, we're done. Yep. <clears throat> Don't be anxious. For now, don't be anxious. Don't worry and fret and wring your hands and grind your teeth and, and, and pace the floor and, and worry all night and worry all day and just see yourself going down. Why don't you see yourself going up? Don't be overly concerned and worried and anxious about your life, what you're going to eat and drink and, and what you're going to wear and where you're going to live and all, the, all the, 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 the basics, the basics of life. Yeah, don't do that. Yep, don't do that. Look at the fowls of the air. So, so you're supposed to do that. When's the last time you did that? Yep, I love the word and I'm a doer of it. When's the last time you just walked out there and looked at the sparrows up there on that, up on that telephone wire? Just stop your car and just look at them up there. Man, they are, they're, 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 they're ringing their wings and they're pacing back and forth and they're talking to each other and they're saying, can you believe this? Can you believe, I don't know what we're going to eat. I, I mean, the snow's so deep and I mean, it's so cold. Can, 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 you've never seen that one time. They're up there singing. Just up there having a big time, bouncing around in the wire, flitting around, just, just like they're having a party. Every day. Every day. You've never, ever, ever seen one out with a sign alongside Highway 16, we'll work for food. I'm not making fun of people that, that, that do that. I'm just saying, you've never seen a bird do that. God takes care of them, and that's what it says. See, see this is what your Bible says to do. Consider the birds. That's what it says. Consider the flowers. That's what it says to do. Just sit down sometime and say, wow, look at all these wild flowers up on this bank and up in this field. Look at all these flowers. Not one of them are worrying about a thing. Not one of them. What are they saying down there in Jamaica? Don't worry. You're on holiday. Every little thing gonna be all right. Just hang loose. Go to the beach. Wiggle your toes in the sand. Pastor, but do you know what's going on? Yeah, I'm getting sand in my toes. <laughs> 31. Therefore, Take no thought. Again, don't be overly concerned about. And then, it, 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 there's, there's the magic word right there, saying. So you think on anything long enough, it's going to come out of you. So you started out worrying, and now you're saying. Now you're talking your problems, and you're saying what might happen, and, and, and you're confessing and professing and vocalizing and verbalizing and articulating out of your mouth. And he says, no, don't do that. Don't do that. 
Rather, it tells you what to do, verse 33, seek first. And then it starts all over again in verse 34. Take no thought. Don't be overly concerned. This, this one in my Bible study Bible says, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will have enough things for you to worry about. That's, that's what it says. Philippians, it told us to turn over there real quick. Philippians chapter 4. And step by step, this tells you what to do. Exactly what to do in order. 6 and 7. All right, Philippians 6, 7. Be careful, worried about, overly concerned about, anxious concerning nothing. You mean I can't worry about anything? Nope. Not a thing. According to our Bible, you can't worry about a thing. Not a thing. Not, not one thing. Don't worry about anything. Don't be overly concerned. That doesn't mean don't think on and plan. And take, that means don't wring your hands and fret about, no, we're going down, uh, we're going under, we're all going to get sick and die. It's going to wipe out the whole human race. And, and you, you know there's still a threat of nuclear war. Well, there's a threat of an asteroid going to hit the, going to hit, the, we, we, we need to dig a hole. And we need to, The sun's going to get blotted out, and all the animals are going to go crazy. <laughs> Be careful, careful, full of care, and worry and fretting and anxiety for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And supplication, that's a specific request. With, with thanksgiving. <laughs> Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Let your requests, not your worries, not your complaints. Not your concerns. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard and garrison round about and keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 5.7. 1 Peter 5.7. Real simple verse. A lot of the kids know it. They, they, they share it with me uh, nearly every service when, when they come in. Casting at least 51% of your anxiety cares upon him, for he cares for you. Can you find that in the Amplified Bible? Thank you. The Amplified Bible uh, uh, renders this verse, uh, casting the whole of your cares, whatever you have to be careful, filled about cares, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all, on Him. For He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Yeah, he cares for me. He cares for me. Well, why aren't you worried about this? Because He cares for me. He's watching over me, and I'm one of His. Uh, and what have I got to worry about? What have I got to worry about? I have nothing to worry about. And if I did have something to worry about, I'd have to be a doer of the word because I love the word and I'm a doer of it. And so I have to cast all my cares upon him. And, and so while we were having the conversation, the question was posed to me, how, how, how do I do that? I say, I just, I just like pretend I'm holding whatever it is that I'm worried about. And, and I'm, oh, I got, here's my issue and here's my problem. I don't have to explain it. He, he knows what I'm going through. And here's what I'm going to do, God. Uh, you're, you're bigger than I am. You're, you're, you're mightier than I am. Uh, you're a lot smarter than I am. And uh, this it says right here in your word, I'm supposed to cast this on you. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it down right here. Cast your burdens on the Lord and leave them there. And so I'm just going to drop it right here. And then it's not going to be my worry anymore. You deal with it. You take care of it. It's not my problem. 
Now it's your problem. Okay? Uh, and I'm not ever going to worry about it again. I'm, I'm never going to worry about it if it's, if it's money. If it's, now, if I have to do something, I'll continue to do it. I can't just say, well, I'm just going to quit everything. I'm never, never going to think about it again. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm, just, I'm never going to tithe. I'm never going to give. I'm never going to pay my bills. I'm not going to save. I'm not going to budget. I'll just let God handle all of that. Did you, did you also say not going to pay taxes because you're not only going to go to broke, you're going to go to jail? No, you're just not going to worry about it. You're going to do what's necessary. Get a second job if necessary. Quit spending so much if necessary. Have a garage sale if necessary. But don't worry about it. Amen. Don't worry and fret and act like there is no God. Act like he's never made a promise to you. Act like he has. Act like his word is true. Act like he's real. Believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen. Diligently seek him. Amen. 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 Now, I've had this conversation with, uh, I don't know, probably, I don't know, half this church. One of my favorite verses by default, Hebrews 2.15 that says, because of fear of death, people are all their lifetime in bondage. Subject to bondage. Supposed to be subject to God. Amen. Subject to bondage because they're afraid to, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm so worried. What are you worried about? I'm so scared. What are you scared about? Pastor, I, I have this fear of, of, of heights. Why are you afraid of heights? You don't have a fear of heights. You have fear of dying. Well, aren't you afraid to die? Not a bit. Not a bit. The old dust will go back to the dust room it's taken sooner or later. Can't hardly wait to get to heaven the way it is. Into the presence of my master. Praise God. Afraid? Anxious? Worried? Concerned? It's up to me. I'd already be there. Got work to do. In a straight betwixt two. Having a desire. To depart and be with Christ, which is by far the best, but more necessary for me to, for you, as I say. Yes, amen. That's what the apostle said. That's what the apostle said. You can't fear and faith at the same time. Peter was in faith, got out of the boat, walked on the water, looked at the waves and got fearful and sank. Jesus picked him up and said, why did you fear, O ye of Little faith. Now think about it. If it only takes a little faith to walk on water, man, where are we at? You didn't want to hear that. All right, Isaiah 26, 3. Come on, quickly. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Thou will keep him. Come on. In perfect peace, whose mind is focused on their issues on what tomorrow may bring, on what the financial future is, on the next raging pandemic. No, there's only perfect peace on those whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Because perfect peace goes with trust in thee. Yep. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he Trust in thee. Here's one of my favorite verses, one of my favorite sections of the whole Bible. Might be yours too. It goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Psalm 23. He makes me to lie down in the greenest of pastures and beside still waters. And he restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through. And I don't even stop to take a break. Dr. Philip Godot says, if you're going through hell, don't stop. And catch a little fire on the way through. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Catch a little fire on the way out. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Well, if I could just feel him. You have to feel him. He said he's there. 
Well, if I could just see him. You don't have to see him. I don't walk by what I see. I don't walk by what I feel. What's that song we hate so bad, Paula, on Christian radio about prove to me you're here by... Oh, there's a couple of them on there. We fight each other to get to the radio to turn that gut rod off and get that <laughs> doubt and unbelief out of our car. Just prove to me you're here. If you, would just, if you would just reach down out of heaven and do something right here, you know, in this realm where I live, so I could just know that you're there. He never do that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligent. He said he's be with you. He said he's never going to leave you or forsake you. He said he's with you always. He said he'd come and make his abode in you. He's there regardless of what you feel. Because if, if he did that for you today, you'd be begging him to do it again tomorrow. And you'd be walking by sight, by sight and not faith. And that doesn't please God. He wants you to take him at his word and believe what he said regardless of what you feel, regardless of how it seems, regardless of what you see or hear. Well, he did that for other people in the Bible one time. He, his hand appeared out of heaven and wrote on the wall for one person. Yeah, a demon-possessed king. <laughs> Not very good company to keep. He did speak around the religious people. And, and Jesus said, did you hear that? And they said, that was thunder. I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and a staff, your, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, right in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely trouble and calamity shall follow me all the days of my life. Chase me down. Now the blessings of God will come upon me and overtake me. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. All right then. All right then. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? When the wicked, my enemies, and my foes come upon me to consume my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble He shall hide me in His pavilion, and in the secret of His tabernacle shall He hide me. He shall set me on a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I'll sing, yea, I'll sing the praises of the Lord. Remember what Jesus said? Mark chapter 6. Just look at this verse. They'll put it up. Mark chapter 6. We're not done in the Psalms. Mark 6, 36. Remember this? Mark 6, 36. He said this to parents whose child just died. And, and, and he sent them away, uh, and, and, and oh, no, 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 no. I'm Mark 5, 36. You knew what I meant. <laughs> Mark 5, 36, as soon as Jesus heard that word, he said this. Do not be afraid, only believe. Now, your translation may say a little bit differently. Fear not, only believe. Fear not. Only believe. You can only do one at a time. Do, do something for me right now. Inhale. I don't care. Through your mouth, through your nose, through your ears. I don't care. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I didn't say yawn. Inhale. Exhale. Now do both at the same time. Can't do it, can you? Can't do it. You can only do one at a time. You can only do one at a time. Fear not, believe only. You can only do one at a time. Just choose. No, 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 no. Why would I be afraid? Fear is a demon. Fear is a spirit. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Yeah, don't be afraid. Trust God. Keep your mind stayed on Him. 
If you're going through trouble, it, 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 when, you're, when you're going through trouble, because I say if, because you may not be right now. I mean, things may be, you know, it, it's like, it's like uh, you, you know, kayaking down the, down the river. You know, the whole river is not white rapids. The whole river is, is, is not four foot drop falls, uh, six foot nine foot. You know, the whole river isn't like that. There, there are some stretches of the river that are just nice and flat and calm. Aren't you glad for those times? And then you hear this sound. You know, look up ahead and there's water and rocks and it's coming. Relax, adventure's on the way. And sometimes it comes gradually, and sometimes it comes 30 hours ago, you didn't expect your mom to have a massive stroke. Sometimes it comes in a heartbeat. Sometimes it comes in a phone call. Sometimes it comes in a, in a form of an emergency. Sometimes it knocks the, knocks the wind out of you. You didn't see it coming. Put God's word in you when you don't need it, and it will be there when you do. And if it's not there, all that will come out your mouth is the circumstance. This is what happened, this is where they're going through, and here's what happened to us, and here's what, we're gonna, here's what they're saying they're going to do to us, and... And, and that's, that's, that's all that will come out because there's the things that we're giving you right now to prepare yourself have to, have to be put in you. And, and don't wait till you need them to try and go look them up. Uh, Psalm 91. How about that? How about the 91st Psalm? Huh? Glory to God. Music team, you all ready? Just about, all right. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. That's a protective, the shadow of the, of the Almighty. I will say, what are we going to eat and what are we going to drink and what are we going to wear and where are we going to live? And That's what Matthew 6 said, right? Huh? I will say of the Lord, this is what I'll say, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Next verse, surely he will deliver us from the, and then it goes all the way to the pestilence and the attack. In verse 5, you will not be afraid for the terror by night or, or, or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that walks in darkness, or destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand will fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Yeah. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you've made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. No evil will befall you, or plague come near your dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over you to keep you. Underline that. To keep you. That's protect you. In all of your ways. Not most of them. Uh, all of your ways. They'll bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot on a stone. You'll tread on lions and adders and young lions and dragons. You'll trample under feet. Because you've set. Now here are the seven blessings that God promises. Because you've set your love upon me. Therefore, I'll deliver him. I'll set him on high because he's known my name. He'll call upon me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him. I'll honor him. And with long life, I'll satisfy him and I'll show him my salvation. My salvation. All right. You want, you want, you want three bonus verses here? You do. All right. So, uh, Proverbs, a couple pages to the right. Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, and, and this is number 1, verse 24. When you lie down, you'll not be afraid. Whew, you'll not be afraid. No, you'll lie down and your sleep will be sweet. And you'll not, you'll, you'll not be afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord shall be your confidence. I said, for the Lord shall be your confidence. 
keep your foot from being taken. First Timothy 4, 18, excuse me, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. And the Lord will deliver me from, see, this is for you to put in your mouth, put in your heart, put in your mouth, put in your heart, put in your mouth, keep in your heart, keep in your mouth, for the Lord will deliver me. See, a lot of people, they don't need prayer. They need the Lord. They don't need somebody to lay hands on them. They need the presence of God. They need to trust God. They need to just get enveloped in the strength and power of the almighty God. Amen. The Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Here's one of my favorites. 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 3. And God is faithful. And God is faithful. The Lord is faithful who will establish you and keep you from evil. The Lord will, let's practice, the Lord will establish me and keep me from evil. And keep me from evil. And, and, and then our closing, we're going to close with uh, Psalm chapter 3. Man, this is, this is a great psalm right here. I mean, this is David when he's getting chased. This is David when, when, when they're after him. When they're after him. Man, get the rest of your team up here. Come on. The, the, uh, psalm chapter 6. Excuse me, chapter 3. You ready? Lord, how increased are they that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. Well, I, spo- I thought we weren't supposed to repeat the circumstance. And Oh, you didn't read the next word. But! You didn't read the next word. The next word is but. But you, O oh Lord, you're a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid down and I slept and I waked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people who set themselves against me round about. Rise, O Lord, and save me, O my God. You've smitten all my enemies on the cheek and broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 815 and 1030, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.